So let's just get some practice writing equations of conics, which have focuses at the pole, or foci at the pole, and they have the stated eccentricity and stated directrix. So here we've got an eccentricity of 1, and that immediately tells me I'm dealing with a parabola. Um, it also gets me started on the structure of my equation. Now, since this is an, uh, this has a directrix at x equal to negative 3, that means that um, I'm going to be using this form of a conic. Now, that's x equal to negative 3, and since that's a negative, I'm going to put a negative here. Okay, but we know um, we know that e is one, and we know that k is going to be three. So this is going to be one times three divided by one minus one cosine of theta, which we could simply write as three over one minus cosine of theta. So one thing to keep in mind from that example is that k is always positive. So you don't want to put a negative 3 up there in the numerator. Okay, it's going to be a 3. Um, the negative is reflected in the denominator by the, um, the sign in front of that e. So let's try to find an equation for this one here. So e is equal to 3 fifths. So since e is equal to 3 fifths and that's less than 1, then we know this is an ellipse. And we've got y equal to 4, which means that I'm looking at an equation of this form. Now it's a positive, uh, positive k value, so it's going to be 1 plus e sine theta. Okay, and so, uh, and so this tells me that k is 4. So my equation would be r equals e, which is 3 fifths times k, which is 4, divided by 1 plus e, which is again 3 fifths, sine of theta. Okay, now this is probably not the way you're going to see it written most of the time. Um, so I'm going to multiply through by 5, and if you do that, the numerator becomes a 12. The denominator becomes 5 plus 3, sine of theta. And although it's not in the standard form, that we recognize, you want to be comfortable with going back and forth between the standard form and one that's that might likely be presented to you. So there's our equation of our ellipse. And finally, let's do the equation of this one here. So e is six fifths, that's bigger than one. So now I know this is a hyperbola. which means, uh, and since x is equal to 3, I mean that means that I'm looking at something of this form. And it's a positive k value, so it's going to be a cosine 1. Again, this tells me k is equal to 3. So it's going to be r equal to e, which is 6 fifths, times k, which is 3, divided by 1 plus e, which is 6 fifths, cosine of theta. And again, as we did before, I'm going to multiply through by 5 to turn this into 18 over 5 plus 6 cosine of theta. And that's the equation of our hyperbola. So you probably notice that they all very, they look very much the same, right, in terms of their overall structure, but they produce different pictures, different graphs. Um, and so the only way to make sense of it is to understand the relationship between E um, and the actual graph being, being determined, and then also, of course, orientation depending on where the directrix is.